happy. We still have some rights left. And I had a right to a jury trial. As you pointed out, it's rare uh, in this day and age with all the administrative state that's come up around us to get 12 of your peers to actually evaluate your conduct. But I did have that opportunity. And thankfully, they were paying attention and awake. And they could see that the government had no case. The U.S. Department of Justice that was the prosecutors, they had no case. Uh, They claimed in the indictment that I had prepared three false federal income tax returns. But during testimony, none of their experts could point out a single false item or line in the tax returns that I had prepared. The special agent who investigated me was directly asked if he had seen any evidence of a conspiracy between me and the client. And he said, no. So the jury, uh, you know, I talked to the jurors later after the verdict, and the jury was saying to me, I mean, they, Joe, what we couldn't understand is why they were making, the, they, the government, was the prosecution was making you look so good. And I said, well, they were using a lot of my work papers, the very documents that I put together to ask for this refund. And I did everything by the book. I I was a CPA at the time, and I was just trying to advocate for my client and follow the IRS rule book. And for that, I was indicted, and they tried to put me in prison and silence and discredit me. Thankfully, the jury was listening and paying attention, and they saw that there was absolutely no evidence of any wrongdoing, and I was acquitted of all four charges. Wow. And, you know, now we read about big corporations not paying taxes, but then they argue, well, but our, our executives pay taxes. But you look at that, on average, they pay less than 10 percent. They've The ultra rich have written this. They created the income tax to control this country. You know, it's in the Communist Manifesto and it's 10 planks, Joe, as you know, to have an income tax. Uh, this is the opposite of the American system. And, and, and as Ron Paul and others yourself expose the IRS and the the private Federal Reserve. Now over 90% of Americans in polls know that it's private and a fraud. So they've gone from just saying, oh, you're a racist if you say the Federal Reserve's private or the income tax is a fraud. Well, now that doesn't work anymore. So what's the next phase then? Because as we're seeing, the more taxes we pay, the poorer we get. Uh, You know, Kennedy cut the income tax by close to 50%, tax receipts doubled. But look at California passing carbon taxes now, which is further killing your economy. They're not stupid. They know what they're doing. They want to shut down the society so they can consolidate it. So, so, so where do you see this going as people wake up on one end, but also as a tyranny uh, tries to uh, stomp that liberty back down to the ground? I'm extremely concerned because, uh, as I'm sure you've recognized, I've heard you say it on your show, uh, we're, we're in a sprint uh, with the, the enemy to the finish line. And uh, that sprint, I mean, it's as fast as we can run and as fast as they can run. They're, they're running with the, the tyranny and the sword and the boot on our necks, and we're running with the truth and trying to educate as many people as we can. Uh, and I, I'm not sure who's going to reach there first, but if you look at history— And of course, those excellent documentaries where you point out how many hundreds of millions of people have been executed, killed, uh, tortured by government. Government is the uh, entity that we need to watch out for. Uh, Neither you nor I advocate that we don't have any government, but that we recognize that, as you've pointed out, government is a, um, you know, about the the servant. It's... uh, you really have to watch that servant very carefully. And uh, I just, we all need to redouble our efforts to educate eat our neighbors, even if they look at us like we have two heads. Uh, that even happens to me. You know, of course, when I show them my picture of what I used to do, uh, they they kind of shrink back and they, it kind of shuts them up. So I know most people don't have a picture like that to show around. But nevertheless, keep trying, uh, keep praying, of course, because uh, God can do amazing things in opening people's eyes. Uh, even those that are on the other side, the dark side, uh, their eyes can be open. So we need to continue to pray for that. Uh, but we just, we can't give up. T- t- I agree with you. Tell me about this particular exhibit from the trial, though. Uh, it's an email here, uh, and, and we're going to put it on screen here uh, in just a moment. But Joe, uh, t- tell us about this. Well, the, the, the document was fascinating in the sense that I only learned about it 
uh, a few minutes before this gentleman, Tom DeLeonardo, who you can see at the, to at the top of the email, that's his, uh, the person who sent the email. But the nutshell of the story is that when about two years after I resigned from the IRS, I bumped into this Tom DeLeonardo at the IRS building, like at the foyer down at the bottom of the, you know, on the street, basically. And he said to me, it's really a shame that you've decided to hang around with all these greedy people. And of course, I was very you know, taken aback that he would accuse me of being greedy and hanging around with greedy people. So I said to him, Tom, look, you used to work with me, and I, I hope you see that I have, I had integrity at least back when we used to work together. Can't you, who actually works for the Department of Justice, arrange for me to have a meeting with someone, someone who can address these questions and concerns I have, and then I can share those questions and concerns and the answers with the rest of, the, of America, and we can get rid of this. I mean, if, if I'm wrong or I'm doing bad things for our country, expose me. But I'm sincere. You used to work with me. You know I'm sincere. Well, it turns out, Alex, that Tom went back to his office back in D.C., and not but a few days after he met with me, he wrote an email to his boss, Ronald Semino. And Ronald Semino still works for the U.S. Department of Justice, but he's been promoted. He's now, I believe, a deputy attorney general under Eric Holder. And Semino got this email. And as you can see in here, uh, if you're able to point some of those things out on the screen, uh, he does point out that he claims that my associates are mostly notorious illegal tax protesters who would most assuredly be disruptive and uncooperative. uncooperative. But Tom also says about me that he spent many hours working with me and that he believes that I would listen to the Department of Justice Tax Division. So this email was given to us, the defense, just a few minutes before Tom testified in my trial. And what this email points out is that even when a Department of Justice trial attorney asks his boss, who was in charge of of enforcement of the income tax prosecutions for the entire Western United States. And he asked that boss for a response and telling him that I'm a sincere person. The response he got was nothing. Ronald Semino did not even respond to this email. So that goes to show not only that I was sincere in trying to get answers all the way back in 2001, but someone who worked in the Department of Justice and put through a request up his chain of command was ignored as well. So the jury could see that Bannister has tried through every possible channel to get answers that would you know, um, contradict his findings and no one's come up with, with anything. No one's, no one's tried to talk with him or do anything. Now, this and, shows, I mean, when you're in the right, you're going to show somebody the law. You're going to answer the questions instead of calling people kooks or nuts. Uh, just like they call us kooks and nuts for saying the Federal Reserve was private. It doesn't work anymore. So here you are, you see him, and he's like, oh, Joe, you hang out with greedy people because he's, you know, morally mad that you're making him think. And you come exactly. back with, hey, why don't you, you know, you know I'm a real person. We were friends. Why don't you then just have them please answer my question? Maybe you can get some results here. Maybe you can have them show me this and I'll, I'll be happy. And, and he goes and tries to find out and he can't. Because, exactly. because it's all a fraud. In fact, here's the ultimate example right here, and I want your take on this, because I've studied this in depth. It's the end of World War II. America totally trusts the government for the first time, because uh, we're the good guys. We just beat the Nazis, so we must be perfect. And, and, and the government's our mommy, it's our daddy, it's our big brother. And so they take the income tax that wasn't used, but for maybe one you know, point at the top percent, and, and, and then that was only a few points, you know, sounded reasonable. Now they expand it out. But something else happened after World War II. They started the double set of books, the Comprehensive Annual Financial Reports, which then shuffles off over 70% of the money on average of county, city, state, federal, you name it, to these offshore banks for, quote, investments. And they also came to all the churches through the big denominations and said, you do get your First Amendment exemption from taxation and regulation because Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof as the First Amendment begins. Then the press and the right to assemble and redress of grievances. But the first part is religion. And they came to him and they said, just sign this quick, easy form. 
it's there's not even a filing fee and you get your tax exemption. So they got them to opt in, but the trick was they became a charitable organization under US code and regulatory systems. So that's how the trick works. And that's what the IRS is. That's what all of this is. I mean, I've read the federal cases of trucks were starting to get on the new highways people paid for and were tearing them up. And they said, those are heavy trucks. They're making money, they're commercial. Make them pay more they're using your road. Then they used that, began to tell people, okay, well, it's the end of World War II. Get a little paper ID, not even with your picture on it, just to prove your car's been checked out and that you know, you're paying for the road, even though your gas tax is already paying for it. And then now it expands out to everything. This is how they did the IRS. This is how they got the churches into 501c3, now controlling what they could politically can do, when before Congress shall make no law respecting the establishment of religion, or prohibiting the free exercise thereof. They trick you into saying, I'm applicable as somebody working in Puerto Rico or Guam. I'm applicable as, as a charity now. I'm no longer a church. I'm a commercial driver. And it's all lawyer fraud. And once you get it, that's all they do because it's done by color of law. It's not even really unconstitutional because as you said, it's all fraud. They trick you into the contractual agreement but now it's been done by custom so long, even if you figure this out, the police, the investigators, they don't know. They were like you before. They really think you're a kook. And, and, and so the juries think it too in most cases, you're going to jail. It doesn't matter that they're sending preachers to jail who aren't 501c3. And it says Congress shall make no law respecting a establishment of religion, prohibiting the free exercise thereof. And until the 50s, no, this didn't even exist. It's all this fraud, but the big kicker is, is that they do it not just because it's fraud and, and a trick, but because the elite know it, and then you learn they all use the loopholes and are exempt, and they're still living under the Constitution. I mean, it's masterful. It really is masterful. It is, and it, it's all a coordinated effort, as you know, you've documented over and over again. And that's, you know, of course, what was disappointing to me was I thought it, I was disappointed enough to see that it was such a scam going on with the federal income tax, but to see that it was just one tentacle of a humongous octopus uh, was was disappointing on the one hand, but it also made me rely more on my faith and realize that you know, God knows what's going on, and we need to just to pray and and be on the side of good and uh, expose the evil and make sure we're not doing, we're not having part in it. Um, because it is a huge monster that's out there, but we shouldn't feel intimidated because together we can do amazing things. And of course, with God's help, his guidance, uh, his inspiration, uh, we can do great things. So um, I think there's, I have plenty of encouragement. I don't want people to think I'm discouraged. Uh, you know, been through a few uh, harrowing experiences for sure, and I may be through some more in the future. But the bottom line is, as, as this email points out, uh, when you when you are an honorable person and you're a good example, uh, peop the, the the government and these these tyrants uh, they come up short, and they, their dirty tricks don't always work. Well, that's right. Um, now, they've really tried to persecute other IRS agents and, and uh, not so much Treasury people that have been honorable, but, but they are really scared of people that work for the system like Saul of Tarsus waking up. I mean, that shows that's an Achilles heel. And a lot of people are like, well, then why should I, you know, if, if you're a cop or a federal agent you know, out there watching, why should you then? Uh, you know, stand up to this or, or, or send us documents or things like that. Because corruption doesn't just stop at one point historically. It always keeps moving. And I try to explain this to people that corruption can be right here, but 